There are those who sail the world with big boats and lots of money. But for those of us on a tight budget, what does our lifestyle look like? So this morning, we've actually got a couple of really big decisions that we need to make. The East Coast of Florida, everything's so expensive. Yeah. The thing that we sort of always tell people about boat work is you can get it done outside of the United States. This is our grand, beautiful, perfect office. This is how we managed to make episodes in a very small 30-foot sailboat. We're basically living in this expensive resort vacation paradise and just trying our hardest not to spend any money. <laughs> Will you carry me like I am Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico, before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough money to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. After spending a month exploring the south coast of Cuba, we said goodbye to some extremely remote islands and are now enjoying being back in civilization in Grand Cayman. Oh, <laughs> this roll is killing me. <laughs> I can barely work up the strength to just sit up and start getting the inside of the boat ready. Um, we are heading back to Governor's Creek today, a nice, calm, flat anchorage where we can uh, catch up on some episodes. But step one is sitting up, which is awful. Well, you ready to get out of here, bud? Yes, <laughs> too much rolliness for me. <laughs> I am so ready for a good night of sleep. So we're gonna head around back to North Sound, but on the way, we are going to dive the kitty wake again. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart It's only about four miles to the wreck and so I want to just motor sail but with only the main up going downwind it's given us a lot of weather helm and so the autopilot tries to correct, and it tries to correct too much, and it, and it gets close to jiving. This is another one of those situations where if we had a roller furled head sail, we could just throw that thing up instead of the main, yeah. and it would just be so much better. We weren't more here for the last couple days. Yeah, that would not be. This is a little bit worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing my breathing to kind of zen out. Yeah, well, let's get you in the water. Wait, hold on. We'll be together. Take me back where I belong. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is all gone. Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone you know like been underway and then like stopped briefly for one of the most mind-blowing free diving experiences ever <laughs> and then just get back underway so now we got a whole pile of stuff that we got to rinse off and I gotta get the hell out of this wetsuit <laughs> So we're 
gonna grab some water here from the fuel dock before we uh, anchor here in Governor's Sound. Oh, all right, well, we are all watered up and time to go anchor, make dinner, and pass out. What a long day. All right, good morning and welcome to Governor's Sound. Oh man, it is so nice in here. It's like so smooth and calm. Yep, I slept like a freaking rock. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a funny little place because we're just surrounded by huge mansions. <laughs> like these super expensive homes. And so it feels a little awkward because we're basically anchored <laughs> in their backyard. We could actually watch TV from the boat. <laughs> yeah, through some of these huge windows. So this morning we've actually got a couple of really big decisions that we need to make. Our main goal right now is to cross the Pacific in 2020 so we can explore the South Pacific. We've got quite a few projects that we need to do before <laughs> we want to tackle that. Big list. So yeah. yeah, we're thinking about going back to the United States, uh, going back to Rio Dulce, Guatemala, or heading over to Panama to do our boat work. So to help us decide where we want to go for these projects, we decided to call up a couple fellow YouTubers. And first we called up Dan and Kika from Sailing Uma to talk to them about their experience doing boat work in both the Rio Dulce and in the United States. What kind of projects are you guys looking to get done? Good question. So. The big one is our spars are kind of getting in rough shape. Atticus is <clears throat> pretty good for two, three day sails, but I kind of want to make a lot of the rig a little more robust if we're going to do the Pacific crossing. It's a lot of that kind of stuff. Guatemala is great for cheap labor, but yeah. it's terrible for materials. Like you will not find the right material in Guatemala at all. Right. Unless you bring your own, or yeah, if you're so working on your own. It's a good place for like sanding and polishing and gel coat and fiberglass, yeah. that kind of stuff. But re rigging, I wouldn't, yeah. honestly, I wouldn't consider that a good place. But you guys know, I mean, I don't know much about the West Coast of Florida, the East Coast of Florida, unless you get up to like Fort Pierce at a minimum, everything's so expensive. Yeah. In your experience doing your work in Florida, like, is the accessibility to supplies and services worth the cost? To you guys? Um, I want to say almost yes, if you have a car. I think the United States without having access to a daily car is really difficult to manage. Yeah. Because unless yeah. you're in like that one perfect place and then you're either close to West Marine or you're close to Home Depot yeah. or you're at a really cheap boatyard, you can never have like all three. And then we called up our friend Nike from White Spot Pirates to talk about her experience doing boat work in Panama. We did a little bit of boat work in Rio Dulce and in our experience there, it was hard to find materials, but the labor was pretty decent, but kind of yeah. hard to get around town. What was it like compared to between Panama compared to the Rio Dulce? Yeah, I think what you said is is probably the most uh, crucial point that um, Panama is actually pretty good for getting some stuff, like for getting supplies. Oh, okay. The only thing I couldn't find in Panama City was like the right aloe aluminum for my boat, so I had to import that because they only have like whatever it's called, 42, 42 seaworthy aluminum. How long would it take, and was it fairly reasonably priced to get things shipped in? It depends on what you ship in, like how much does it weigh, how much does it cost. Um, usually you can do yacht and transit, so you don't have to pay any importation taxes. But then it's advisable to have an agent, so you have to pay the agents. And then the question is, how fast does it get out of customs? And that's more or less a gamble. We're kind of leaning towards either trying to find some used masts um, and buying them, or just having some of the pieces fabricated that we need uh, okay. you know, and just replace all the yeah. problem areas piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. I mean, there is in, uh, in Panama City, for example, there's great machine shops as well. You know, it's not that they don't exist, but um, it depends. For example, if you speak Spanish, if you feel comfortable enough, like running around looking for things, uh, mm -hmm. going there, explaining exactly what you want. And then if you get it back, like looking at it and kind of like more or less know what you're doing. So you can say, oh, no, I don't like this. Can mm -hmm. you please redo it? This is not how I want it. That's why I said it really depends on what kind of type of person you are. Like, how do you like right. things done and how comfortable you feel in, you know, in a, in a different country with different, right. you know, personalities and different. Yeah. Challenges. Yeah. <laughs> right. Challenges. Yeah. Well, bud, what do you think? Any, any ideas? 
Well, heading back to the States sounds really tempting, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, just the idea of being able to get anything, not having to, you know, go on these wild goose chases into <laughs> Spanish-speaking <laughs> countries, um, which we've been doing for the last three years. Yeah, but, I mean, it's a really long way from here, you know, and it's not like we could haul out in a yard in southern Florida, like Dan and Kika were saying, like, it's super expensive in Florida, so we'd have to go probably all the way to North Carolina. We'd have to, you know, wait for good weather windows. Who knows, it might take us a month or two just to get up to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then two months, three months, who knows, to get all the way back down to Panama. That's a lot of time that we're not getting these projects done. Yeah. And a lot of time that we're not cruising either. Like we're just trying to cover ground. Well, in that case, we've got Guatemala and Panama to choose from. Which, I mean, the nice thing about both those options is we don't have to worry about hurricanes. Yeah, that's in true. So yeah, Guatemala would be nice because we've been there. The marinas and boatyards are super affordable. And the manual labor is super affordable. Yeah, that's true. But the, the downside would be uh, it's really hard to get stuff like material shipped into Guatemala. The other thing about the Rio is we that's a really tough sail from, say, the Bay Islands out around Nicaragua and down to Panama, mostly because of the piracy off the Nicaraguan coast. Like, you gotta get past a hundred miles mm -hmm. um, east of Nicaragua before you can turn south again. And so you just gotta have, like, the perfect weather window, which means we'd have to wait maybe a month, right, mm -hmm. after the projects are done. And so, same kind of thing as going to the States. It, it means more time not getting stuff done, not cruising. I kind of feel like if we really want to do this, like if we really want to cross the Pacific next year, the choice that would make that most probable would be, you know, going to Panama. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. I think even though it'll be more expensive, we should just go for it. Yep. I hear you, bud. Yeah. Let's do it. Mission Panama by 2020. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, let's do it. Jellyfish. Yeah. Well, let's see one more time. I got gotcha, you, buddy. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Do it one more time. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Snail. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. Damn. Good move, buddy. All right, bud. So what's the plan? Well, we are waiting for a weather window to head down to Panama. That means that the best use of our time right now is to start editing so that we can get ahead on episodes. Uh, hopefully we'd like to get a, about two weeks ahead on episodes uh, so that at a moment's notice when a weather window comes up, we can leave sail for Panama and not have to worry about uploading episodes while we're underway or while we're getting settled in Panama. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up our standing desk at the companionway. Uh, both Desiree and I started having back problems once we started working at the computer for hours and days on end. It's been helping us a lot to alternate between a sitting desk and a standing desk. It's really helped our back problems. So we'll show you our editing setup on Atticus. perfect office. <laughs> it's uh, pretty haphazard and kind of jerry-rigged, but it works for us and this is how we managed to make episodes uh, two people in a very small 30-foot sailboat. So it takes us working together about two days to put an episode together. So it takes Desiree about a day and a half. Yeah, so basically what I do is I go through all of our footage, uh, kind of select the best clips, throw them on a timeline, and then hand them over to Jordan. After she gives me the assembled footage, it takes me about two days 
to turn the assembled footage into a complete episode. And then once the episode is all ready to go, I'll make the thumbnail, the description, post it to Facebook and Patreon and YouTube. Um, yeah. And that takes me about half a day. Working together takes us two days to make an episode. That means that uh, if we're going to release an episode every week, to get ahead on an episode takes us about an entire week. So four to five days of working more or less. So if we want to get two weeks ahead or two episodes ahead, that means that we're going to be editing uh, 40 hours a week for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So time to get at it. In fact, are you ready to switch? I'm yeah. done standing. Yeah. We are done for the day, and it's time for us to pack up, put the boat back together, and then uh, I think we're gonna go ashore and go for a walk along Seven Mile Beach. So, it's quitting time. <laughs> Well, that's a nice house. <laughs> yeah, right? Think they'll have us over for dinner? <laughs> yeah, we should just go knock on their door yeah. and be like, hey! We're here! What's for dinner? We made it! Hot showers? Do you have Netflix? Yeah, we'll, we'll take Netflix. Do you have popcorn? Yeah. We've got popcorn. We'll just bring it. Man, it's just so funny, the places that we end up. When I imagined sailing around the world before we started, I thought of like, offshore atolls of Belize or remote islands. And the fact that we have to go past all this on our daily commute ashore, it really cracks me up, you know? Like the strange places that we find ourselves. All right, so this is our favorite tie-up spot. It's like the most random place in the world. Most of this is, you know, all private property and mansions and condos. But this one spot is just like this empty lot. You just tie up to this tree. so crazy walking by these super huge expensive resorts and seeing people that are basically spending in one day what we probably spend in like a month, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're basically living in this expensive resort vacation paradise and just trying our hardest not to spend any money. <laughs> Well guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe Subscribe to the channel so that you can catch next week's episode where one of the wealthy owners of a mansion near our boat invites us over so we can hang out and watch movies on his big screen. And then finally, if you are a huge fan of Project Atticus, then consider becoming a patron. That's right. Other than that, guys, we will see you next week. Stuff. We're getting our bodies ready for the cold. Yeah, we're gonna like acclimatize the cold because right now it's like 83 degrees. We're like, it's so chilly. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna put on like a good like fat layer. You started yeah, to like <laughs> eat, eat a lot of butter okay. and like this is this is Din's breakfast right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. guys. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. And if you're already a huge fan of Project Atticus, consider becoming a patron right there. See you next week.